Hello everyone, welcome to another session of Five Questions series. My name is Hansa Nora Sama and um, uh, I've done my Masters in Nematology in Agriculture. So for today, I've chosen three topics and we're gonna, uh, and then I've chosen five questions based on these three topics. The first one being crop sy cropping systems, second is dryland farming, the third is precision farming. Please don't forget to subscribe and press the bell icon. Okay, moving on to the first question, which of the following types of crop cultivation will be most appropriate and effective in forest? And so we've already discussed in the day one of um, our question series, some of the cropping systems. And um, I'm not going to go in detail with all of the cropping systems anymore. So I'm just going to name out some of the cropping systems. So first one being uh, monoculture. Right, and, sec uh, and we have crop rotation, as well as we have multi-cropping, we have mixed cropping, and um, we have sequential cropping, live mulch system, we have intercropping, We have intensive farming, extensive, we have mixed farming as well. I might have missed out some of the cropping system. Right, so before uh, going to the question, let us understand what each of these uh, options are. Okay, so let me just read out the options first. The first one is extensive farming. B is intensive farming, C is mixed cropping, and D is intercropping. So let's just understand each of these cropping uh, systems. All right. So the first one is extensive agriculture. So what is extensive agriculture? It is an agricultural production system that uses small inputs of labor, fertilizers, and capital relative to the land area being farmed. It, it most commonly ref refers to sheep and cattle farming in areas with low agricultural production, productivity. So basically, it's a farming system in a huge land area, but with a sparse population. So the uh, crop production is less as comparative to intensive uh, farming. Okay, so uh, it's mostly um, present uh, in the downs of Australia, in the prairies of America, uh, in the pampas of Argentina and all the uh, mid-latitude grasslands, okay? So um, they mostly uh, depend on the natural fertility of the soil as well as the, um, the land, the terrain, uh, the water resources and the water availability. So crops like wheat and barley uh, are mostly used in this type of extensive agriculture. Second picture, this is for an uh, intensive farming, okay? Intensive farming is a type of farming um, in which we we'll use a lot of input, agricultural input to, and the main aim or the main objective is to increase the productivity and the production intensive farming has drastically changed the whole of agriculture okay so uh, due to increase in population the farmers and uh, the people had to come up with a solution so they went for this intensive farming where they the intensive use of chemical fertilizers uh, pesticides have been used and all the large farm farm machineries were used to increase the yield so that it can sustain the growing population. It increased the yield, it increased the productivity and production, it increased the variety of the food supply as well, and there was a constant uh, food supply for the whole of um, population. But there are some of the disadvantages of this intensive farming. It has a huge environmental impact. Due to excessive use of chemicals, of course, the biodiversity is also going to Get, uh, get affected. Uh, the microorganisms as well as the uh, beneficial insects are also infect uh, are also affected due to these chemicals. And um, deforestation and alteration of natural habitat is also caused by this intensive agriculture uh, because of uh, to create more space for agriculture, people have started cutting down the trees and due to which soil erosion has also increased. Right. So 
other than that, even humans are also in fact affected and uh, the quality of the food supply is also reduced. In the third picture, I have um, highlighted the difference between intensive farming as well as extensive agriculture. Let's just read all of these together. Uh, intensive farming it requires for sustainable high population densities, okay? But in extensive, it is practiced in areas of relatively low population density. Uh, the inputs the, for the design it's high, the labor is also high, capital is also high, and water high. Uh, per acre low overall okay but in soil there are high fertility required so that it can have it can help produce more plants and chemicals are used extensively all right extensive farming uh, the inputs are uh, in inputs the design the labor and the capital they are low and water is also low but then in uh, it's high in overall okay so the soil is low uh, for the soil low fertility is required and the chemicals they are not generally used and the outputs would be high per unit area and for the extensive it is it's low per unit area moving on to another slide mixed cropping okay and this another picture is of intercropping So these two, they are quite similar, but then they have a specific difference. In mixed cropping, it is a cropping system or a farming system where two or more uh, crops are grown simultaneously in one piece of land. Okay, But in intercropping, it is also two or more crops are also grown simultaneously in, one, in a single piece of land, but with a specific pattern. Alright, so... Uh, to make it more clear, I have given a difference between the in intercropping and mixed cropping. So in intercropping, the main objective is to utilize the space left between the two rows of the main crop. Okay, And mixed cropping, it is to get at least one crop under favorable condition. And the second one says more emphasis is given on the main crop and in mixed cropping, it's all crops are cared equally. And in the third one says there is no competition between the both crops since they are usually for intercropping, we always go for companion planting or companion cropping system. And in a mixed cropping, there is competition between the crops growing, all right? And in intercropping, the intercrops are short are of short duration and are harvested much earlier than main, all right? But here, they are, the crops are usually harvested at the same duration. And the sowing time may be same or different, but here the sowing time are, is the same for, the, uh, for all the crops. And the crops are sown in different rows and without affecting the population of main crop when sown as whole sole crop. But here, either sown in rows or mixed without uh, consideration, considering the population. So, uh, as I said, they have a, intercropping have a specific pattern system. So, it may be in a ratio of 1 is to 1 or 1 is to 2, 2 is to 3 or 1 is to 3. So, this may be the main crop and this might be the side crops, right? But in mixed cropping, everything is um, treated equally, even the pesticides and fertilizers, they're all given equally for all the crops. Well, whereas in intercropping, the there, there's a specific input for uh, different. So moving on to the question again, uh, which of the following types of crop cultivation will be most appropriate and effective in forests? Extensive farming, this, this is not possible. And intensive farming is also wrong. Mixed cropping, uh, mixed cropping since uh, we're talking about forests, we cannot treat the forest and the main crop equally. So this is uh, incorrect, but in intercropping, the forest and the main crop, the trees surrounding it are in a different, can, can be treated unequally and it can be treated separately. So intercropping is the most appropriate and, the mo and most effective in forest. Moving on to the next question, which of the following crops is not cultivated under dry land farming? Number A, ruggy, B, groundnut, C, jor, and D, sugarcane. So first of all, let us understand what dry land farming is. So 
Dry, basically, dryland agriculture, it refers to a cultivation of crops entirely under natural rainfall without any irrigation. So there is zero or no irrigation facilities for in the dryland agriculture. And dryland areas, they are characterized by low and erratic rainfall and no assured irrigation facilities. Right? And dryland agriculture is also important for the economy as most of the core green crops, pulses, oil seeds, these are the major uh, agriculture crops and these are all grown on these lands all right so dryland and farming they need a rainfall of about 500 to 1200 millimeter annually all right and ruggy brown nut jowar remember these are one of the main crops for dryland farming and uh, sugarcane on the other hand it's a high water intensive crop so and it needs an at least an average or annual rainfall of about 1500 to 2500 millimeter so the correct answer for this would be sugarcane moving on to another question uh, what is the average annual rainfall for the production of crops in dry farming okay so under dry dryland agriculture we have three categories the first one is dry farming The second one is dry land farming. And the fourth one is rain fed. So these are the three types of uh, dry land agriculture. The first picture is related to a dry farming. Since uh, dry farming is mostly common in the arid region, uh, for crop production, they need an average rainfall of about less than 750 millimeter. And the crop failure is mostly uh, is very frequent because of water scarcity. In dryland farming, it is mostly in the semi-arid region. For crop production, they need about uh, more than five, 750 mm of rainfall. There might be dry spell during the crop production time but then there are crop failure is less frequent all right so in the third picture from the picture itself you can make out that it's in the humid and semi-humid region all right and for here uh, the temp uh, the rainfall for the production of crops is around 1250 more than 1250 or more or equal to 1250 millimeter rainfall Right, so the water scarcity is, a, is also less and there are no or very few chances of the crop failure. All right, so let's go to the question again. So what is the average rainfall for the production of crops in dry farming? So the first one is it's more than 750 mm, which is wrong. And number B is less than 750 mm, which is the right answer. Moving on to the fourth question. This question is related to precision agriculture. Okay, so let's read the question. Consider the following statements about precision agriculture. The first one, it is a farming management concept based on observing, measuring, and responding to inter- and intra-field variability in crops. So number two, the goal of precision agriculture research is to optimize returns on inputs while preserving the resources. Right. So which of the following statements is or are correct? Uh, the first option is one only. Uh, number B is two only. Number C is both one and two. And number D is neither one or two. So the correct answer for this is uh, both one and two. Uh, first and foremost, what is precision farming? So precision farming is also known as satellite farming or a site specific crop management all right so it is uh, it refers to the precise application of agricultural inputs in respect to soil to weather to the crop need in order to improve the productivity the quality and profitability in the agriculture as well as maintaining the uh, natural resources okay so it was developed in the US in the 1980s. It is a modern agricultural practices where it involves the use of GIS uh, GPS and remote sensing okay 
uh, there is a precise use and a, a very effective utilization of the resources um, and input so that it can bring out the best possible uh, productivity and yield and, and yield without polluting the environment or disturbing the natural biodiversity. Okay, so in this uh, slide I have uh, given a, um, on the right left hand side you can see this picture. These are some of the features and the techniques used in precision farming. So the one is sensors and remote sensing technologies and we have high precision positioning systems. We have geo mapping as well. We have automated steering systems, variable rate and technology and integrated electronic communications as well. So there are a few advantages of um, precision agriculture so i have jotted down a few of the points here the first one is optimizing production efficiency since we are using a very precise and meticulous and effective method of farming here we usually the input is very efficient and in that way it will enhance the production and productivity and which will result in a very sustainable agriculture so optimizing quality uh, and um, the minimizing environmental impact due to uh, a precise and a very uh, less input of the chemical fertilizers or any chemical pesticides etc so the risk of environmental degradation is lesser due to lesser nitrate leaching as well as groundwater contamination is also oh. lesser due to the lesser use of the chemicals Minimi minimizing risk and information to act on due to the dissemination of the information about agriculture practices. The soil and the yield can also be mapped which will in turn reduce the risk of crop failure. Okay, so I've given a difference between uh, a traditional farming as well as a precision farming. So in traditional farming, units of treatment and organization the field that is re uh, regarded as a homogeneous arable site whereas in precision farming the arable site that is regarded as different from one point to the another at a field level is heterogeneous okay so the for the nutrient management is based on average sample taking but in precision farming the nutrient management is based on gps and the point like sample taking all right so an average survey on plant diseases and damage and um intervention if necessary but in plant protect uh, in precision farming the plant protection treatment is based on gps and point like plant surface and the sowing with same plant number and variety but in precision farming the plant species and plant varieties are specific in sowing so uh, the same machine operation practice machine operation is adjusted to the arable site and, and the unified plant stock in space and time, uh, the unified plant stock, are, they are usually organized in a homogeneous blocks at an arable site. So the last one says, a uh, few data influencing decision preparation, but in precision farming, a lot of data influencing decision preparation. So these, the, so these are the major methods of the conventional farming, and this is the precision farming, which is, which involves the use of a modern technology and but it's mostly common in the west regions and since uh, India is still a developing country it's very hard for all the farmers to have all these high-tech um, systems and for this it, there is a high cost involved as well as uh, a person need to be a very a person need to be very technically skilled and should be knowledgeable of, of, uh, with all these technology but some farmers in, in the south of India have started practicing it, uh, practicing it and it has doubled the yields of the production so moving on to the last question it says if on a 20 acre farm crops are raised on 15 acres in Rabi 15 acres in Karif and 20 acres in Zaid in a year what shall be Cropping, what shall be the cropping intensity? The so options are 300%, B, 200%, C, 150%, D, 250%. So first and foremost, we need to know what a cropping intensity is. A cropping intensity is the number of crops from the same field during one agriculture year. Okay, so we have a um, formula for this. So cropping intensity... It's a ratio of a net sown area to the total crop area into 100. 
So for this question, I would request you all to please comment the answer. Try to, uh, I've given you the formula for the cropping intensity. So uh, with the help of this formula, try to calculate the cropping intensity. And please comment the answer for whatever answer you've got in the comment section. Well, that's all for today. Uh, please don't forget to subscribe and uh, press the bell icon. And please do share this video if you have liked it. And uh, please join with me for the next session of the question series. Thank you.